I was on uh, Talkbase this morning and uh, I saw a uh, thread where a guy got his original handmade Tobias back that he had bought uh, from Mike's shop on Coenga in Hollywood back in the day. And uh, it got me to thinking about uh, one of the first times I visited uh, the Tobias shop over on Coenga. Uh, my dad would go to work and take me down to Hollywood. Uh, he was working on uh, Vine Street and the studios uh, doing the TV show. And uh, I would basically have the afternoon to run around all through Hollywood as a, as a young, you know, teenager and be able to uh, explore all the, the back alleys of uh, dirty old Hollywood back in the late 70s and early 80s. And uh, I would, you know, try and figure out where all the, the cool music stores were in the area and see what bases there were. And I uh, knew that Mike's shop was, uh, you know, on Coenga. And so I went around the, the block, found his little shop there and uh, went to meet him uh, along with the guys to see what was going on in there. And uh, I'll never forget it. It was, <laughs> I think, I think it was my first time visiting the uh, the shop. It would have been probably around 1980, somewhere in there. And uh, I walked in and yeah, there's, you know, faces everywhere, just gorgeous woods and fancy stuff. And, and Mike, I've known him forever since then and on, uh, you know, he's basically a gentle giant and uh, he's been very kind to me over the years and helpful and I've never seen him really in a, in a bad mood, but that day was, uh, was a real landmark because he was ticked off like crazy. Uh, he went from absolute joy to, to absolute, uh, uh, despair in, in literally five minutes. Uh, so I walked in and, you know, the guys came out of the back with this gorgeous Coca Bolo, uh, base that they had just completed and Mike was just beaming with joy of how gorgeous this thing was and I think it had just come out of you know set up and recently polished and probably within the last day or so and and um, he came out with it and Mike was holding it <laughs> And as he's holding it, literally, the finish started popping up, peeling off, and the body halves were coming off this this base. Uh, and he went from, you know, being all excited about it to just literally panicking as this base was self-destructing right in front of him. <laughs> and uh, it... It turns out, you know, years later, I've learned as a luthier that, uh, you know, you you can't just glue Coca Bolo up, um, and I think that was probably Mike's first time ever using Coca Bolo for an instrument, uh, and I guarantee you, he learned his lesson that you cannot glue Coca Bolo wood up once you've, uh, you know faced it and prepped it to be glued, you have to continually soak that wood with acetone uh, until you can get rid of all the oils in it. Uh, it's a very oily wood and the glue will just not bind to it. And uh, like I say, I think they just, they went ahead, prepped the wood, glued it up and uh, within, you know, uh, no time the the instrument was was ungluing itself so it was a it was a crazy day at uh, Tobias's shop on Coenga and uh, like I say that's that, that's just one of my crazy stories from over the years uh, I remember have a good one